Hey friends, Joshua here, and today I want to share with you a principle on how to leverage your network so you can accelerate your success. Uh, this is very important if you're someone that's looking to increase your level of success in your life. This is a principle you want to make sure is at work. And I'm going to tell you exactly what that is and how you can leverage it today. As the title mentions, this is a biblical principle. And so I'm going to read to you where this comes from um, in the Bible, which is my favorite source for wisdom and understanding and knowledge. And I, I, I could be here all day just telling you the return on, on <laughs> that I've gotten from applying principles that are in the Bible. And so we're going to read one sp specific today in regards to the network and your network. But before I do that, I need to establish a difference here because the problem is a lot of people, when they hear the word network, they assume they know what that means and how to leverage this principle in their life. When really what they what they truly understand is networking, networking and the network principle are not the same thing. They may involve some of the same activities, but they are not the same thing. I'm sorry, I had a, I just had a moment mentally. I'm thinking about those who say, you know, we may look alike, but we ain't the same. Like we come from the same place, but we ain't the same. Sorry, total, total rabbit hole, but I almost went there. Anyways, these are not the same thing. So when you think about networking, I want you to think of that more as a skill, something you do that is much more transactional versus the network principle, which is it's a principle that's tried and true. When we, when we think about just principles overall, some people call them laws of life. These are things that were here way before you and I, and they'll be here when we're gone. Okay, versus that's very different from the, like the skill of networking, which may not have existed a thousand years ago. But this principle, the network principle, has always been at play. And so I wanna make sure that we, we understand that because the problem is people think because they can go to an event and it can pass out a bunch of cards that they understand the, the network principle. And that's, that is, that's only like 0.5%. Um, and that may be why you're probably not even seeing a great return from the networks you're a part of because you don't understand the principle. And today I'm going to help you with that though, but I first wanted to establish that. All right. Looking at my notes here, cause I don't want to miss nothing. Right, let's read this. I want to read this first. This is where we're getting this principle from. And it's in Ecclesiastes chapter five, chapter four, sorry. And we're going to pick it up at verse eight, verse eight. I want to read this to you. I'm going to skip through. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to skip around here a little bit for sake of time, but not for the sake of context. You need to go read this for yourself so you understand the full context. But chapter four, verse eight says, there is one alone without companion. He is neither son nor brother. Yet there is no end to all his labors. Bookmark that, please. Nor is his eye satisfied with riches, but he never asks. Okay, we're going to skip past that. Let's go to nine. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Bookmark that, please. For if they fail or fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? It's a question there. Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So I don't know if you've ever read this, ver this uh, passage or if you've ever thought about it in the context of a network. But I want you to think about this for a second. Because this may describe, you know, some of your situations. For some of you, you have been going at this, this thing called life in general. I'm not even just talking about business, but just life in general. You've been going at it alone. And I can guarantee you, if you're someone that that passage describes in verse eight, let me, let me read it again, because I want to make sure that, that you get this. In verse eight, it says, there's one alone without companion. He has neither son nor brother, yet there is no end to all his labor. If you're someone that's been going at life alone, I can guarantee you it's felt like a lot of work. 
I know I'll use myself as, as an example. When I got, I'm an older child. Maybe that's a part of it. I don't know. But, you know, we, we try to diagnose ourselves with all these and different reasons why. But I'm one that's used to being kind of dependent and doing things on my own. But when I started my own business, I learned very quickly that, that can become tiresome quickly. Like, like that can become a burden very fast if you try to go at business alone. Why? Because we're reading, we're reading it here in this principle. The person that goes at it alone feels like there is no end to the labor. And I could ask you, have you ever felt like in a day or in a week that there was no end to your labor? I'm sure those of you listening or watching, you can say, yeah, that's, that's been me. But the reason why is because we try to go at it alone. That's the first kind of step in this principle, the network principle. The second thing we see here that this passage points out in verse 9, it says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. So going at it alone, labor has no end. But going at it together, there's a reward in that. Why? Because that's the principle. That's the network principle. I hope this is making sense. The network principle says that if you go alone, you might get there, but it's going to take a, a while. That's the slow route and a lot of work. The network principle says, now, if you find a network and you and you join forces with some with others, you can go a lot faster and get a lot greater reward from it. We see some other elements there where a, net, a great network will keep you safe. It'll protect you. It'll provide resources. It talked about if one is cold, how can one stay warm by, by uh, themselves? So it provides resources to protect you. There's so many elements. I, I want to start with why this is so important. Why is it so important that we understand the network principle? Because when we understand it, we can apply it to our lives and then we can accelerate our success. And I want to show you this by showing you four kind of leverage areas that you should know about. And I'm looking at my notes here. There's four areas that you should know about when it comes to your, to the prince of the network principle and the networks in your life. Because let me ask you this, we're about eight months, well, we're not about, we're at the eight month mark within our year. And if I were to ask you to measure the return you've gotten from your network or the networks you're a part of, what would you say? What would you say is the return from the networks that you're a part of thus far in this year? Would you know? How would you measure it? For a lot of us, we don't even think about it that way. We're just going from one networking event to the other, hoping we get business, hope, hoping we you know, give our card to the right person, or we're on the opposite end of the spectrum and we're so darn busy because we're doing it alone that we can't be a part of any network. And we're missing out on the principle. So either we're missing out on the principle or we're not applying the principle correctly. If you fall in either one of those categories, we're going to transform that to date. OK, because I want you to be able at the end of this this uh, this time, I want you to be able to say I can measure the, re the return of my network. I can I can clearly measure what return I'm getting from my network. That'll help you choose networks better and it'll help you accelerate your success, all right? So I think I've convinced you that this is important. I'm gonna show you now the four kind of leverage points that you want to use to measure the return on your network, all right? So there's four here. And again, don't make fun of my handwriting because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm working on this thing still. <laughs> there's four here, all right? The first one is number one greatest currency, of course, time, all right? The second is, talent the third is trust and because i i didn't want to run out of t's the fourth is trove like treasure trove but i don't want to use the word treasure so trove refers to money all right for those of you who are confused by that one these are the four leverage points that you can measure the return of your network that will help you measure the return of your network these are very very important you want to be able to look at these four areas and that will help you determine what level of return you're getting. And you'll be able to see the direct correlation between these four areas and your success. And I'm going to show you how, because you may be thinking, okay, what else? 
here's how you do this. You have to break this down into kind of two categories, all right? Stay with me. We got the four leverage points, time, talent, trust, and trove. Those break down into two kind of categories. You want to measure how are you adding to the network, and then you want to measure return. You never want to have too much of either category. If you're in a network and all you're doing is adding, you're going to burn yourself out. And some of you have experienced this. You're going to burn yourself out and you're not going to be around long enough to get a return. In the same breath, if you are in a network and all you're doing is getting return, then you become the person that shows up to the potluck with, with, with napkins and nothing else. Which, you know what, you know, I like to go for the napkins, but you get my point. You show up to the potluck with nothing in your hand, yet you want to participate in all of the food. Can anybody relate? You know a person like that. If they're in the car with you or around you, don't look at them, please. But that, that is, you want to balance. You want to make sure there's a healthy balance of adding to the network, and you want to make sure there's a healthy balance of receiving. And that is not selfish. We just, we just read the principle. It is, it, is how, it is how this principle is supposed to be activated and, and play out. There should be a, an exchange. You adding and, and you receiving a return. Okay, so here's how this happens on those four levels. When it comes to the first leverage point, you want to leverage people's time and you want to leverage your time. How do you do this? Underneath the addition portion, you leverage your time by making sure you are doing this right here. I wrote down the word serving. Make sure you are serving, okay? I cannot tell you the amount of times or, or the amount of networks that I'm a part of that, be, that I can clearly measure the return of those networks because I can look at how I showed up, started serving, and that led to the return. And what's the return? I'm going to give you that one real quick. The return aspect is, actually not yet, not yet, because I don't want, want, want to go too fast. The serving aspect. So one example that comes to mind, because a lot of people, when they think about serving and, and using and leveraging that time portion, the one thing they think about is like community service. A lot of the networks that some of you are a part of, you measure the return or you measure your, your time by how much you show up and volunteer. I am not talking about volunteering. That is a portion of, of serving, but I think that the aspect that people don't think about that I want to draw your attention to today is serving at the individual level, right? So I'll give you an example. There are times where I'll meet someone at, a, at, an, at an event. We'll, we'll build a relationship you know, I'll, they'll become a part of my network. I'll become a part of their network. And then I'll randomly ask this person or call this person up and say, hey, is there anything that I can do for you? Like, is there anything that you need right now in your business or anything I can, uh, any way I can serve? You would be amazed, or maybe you wouldn't. But it is, it is amazing the response. It, they, they're oftentimes, they're shocked. Because no one has ever... Um, hit them up and ask them how can they serve them? How can they give their time to them? But that, that's how you leverage time within your network. You be very intentional. There are people in your network that if you reached out and you did this, I, I remember I did this at an event. I went up to the president and I was, this is, you have to be sincere, of course, right? This is not, we're not smooching or smooching, whatever it's called. But I, but I wanted to be a part of a, a certain event or department that was taking place. So I went up and I sincerely asked, because I've been taught this. If you want to get a return, you need to first look to serve. So I went up and I said, hey, how can I, I want to just show up to this event and stack chairs, help clean, you know, just be a part of the setup. Because, you know, that those are the things nobody really wants to do. The setup and breakdown, you know, people check out on those, on those aspects. But I asked this question and later found out that this really led to me having a lot more opportunities, even leading within the organization. And I had just, I had just showed up. But I understand the network principle 
of how to leverage time in the form of serving when I'm adding to a network. So that's, that's one aspect of it, right? That's the adding part. That's what you need to do. Show up, be looking to serve. Don't show up and be looking to hand out all your, your, your business cards or you know, what you can get out of it. Just show up and be ready to serve. And you will see a return from that. And a part of that return, you also need to be ready. And this is going to sound crazy to some of you. But you need to be ready to receive. Now, I gave you one portion of the of one half of the story about calling up people and asking them, hey, what can I do to serve you? But I started doing that because I noticed I have a coach um, that I work with and he would always at the end of our coaching calls, he'd say, hey, what can I do for you? Is there anything I can is there any way I can serve you or anything I can provide for you? And at first it would always catch me off guard. Because I'm so used to that, that verse eight we read, I'm so used to laboring and working on my own and going the hard route that when someone would ask me what, what can they do for, for me, I didn't even have an answer. And you might be the same way. You may have this false sense of humility that when someone asks you that, that they're not really asking you, that they don't really care. So you don't want to burden them by, by really telling them what would be helpful to you. I, I would submit to you today that get, be prepared for people to come and ask you, what do you need? Have a, have a working list. I'm not saying seek out people to tell them what you need. I'm saying be ready when they come to you and they ask you a question. When they ask, hey, what can I do for you? Have a, have, have, let me say it this way. Make sure you have put some thought into this. Because think about it. I remember once one of the people that asked me this question I was looking for a publisher at the time. Lo and behold, that person had a direct contact to a publisher that led to uh, my book being released. Now, some people would argue, you know, self-publishing is the better route, but I didn't know anything about any of it. So I needed some handholding. And the point is, all because I, I, had a, I had a request ready. I had thought about, hey, here's some, something I'm thinking about, praying about. And I want you to be prepared in the same way so you can get a return on your network. How silly is it every time somebody come up to you and they ask you, hey, is there anything I can do for you? You, you take the route of, and I'm good. Thanks, man. It's like that unconscious response we have when somebody says, how's it going? Good. How about you? Are we really doing good? No, it's, it's a trained response. The same way when someone asks, what can they do for us? Instead of receiving their time, because they're offering to leverage their time instead of receiving it, oftentimes we will end up rejecting it, and that is a poor mistake, okay? So I didn't mean to stay on that one that long, but I hope that makes sense. You want to make sure that you are leveraging time by, by adding to your network by serving and then, and then getting a return from that by receiving. Be ready to receive, okay? The next one is talent. I don't know if I'll get through all of these, but we'll keep going. For the sake of time, I want to make sure I don't make this video too long. When it comes to talent, okay, how to leverage talent inside of a network. You want to leverage the talents of others and your own talent. So the addition portion, obviously, we have to think about contribution. Okay, what are you contributing to the network? And then the return piece is the development piece. How are you allowing your talents to be developed? The first, well, let's start with the ad portion first, though. When it comes to leveraging your talents within a network, you first have to know your talents. You have to know what is it that you add to the network. And I meant to say this off the top, but I think it's appropriate to, to bring it up now. You need to be thinking about what are the networks that would help accelerate your success. For instance, uh, recently, I decided, man, I want to get back into real estate investing. We got out before COVID hit, uh, which I'm thankful we did that. And now that I feel like things are kind of settling down, I want to get back in. But what I knew, I wanted to get back in at a higher level than I was before. And so my eyes are looking for what are the networks I want to be a part of? What are the networks I need to join? But also, I was thinking, what am I going to contribute to these networks? What are the talents I'm bringing to this network? And that's the key here. You want to be thinking, what are the talents that you are bringing to a network so that you can be intentional 
about how you spend your time. Maybe you're good at numbers. Maybe you're good at encouragement. Maybe you're good at um, speaking. I don't know. There's, a, there's a tons of talents. You want to think about how are you going to contribute. And then on the other side, you want to think about how will this develop your talent? Like for me, I'll say I have a, uh, like I'm a visionary. So I, I, I have visions of like maybe owning a, a residential neighborhood. I have no idea where to start with that. <laughs> like I have no clue where to start with that um, dream and vision of wanting to, to build a residential community. But you know what? Because I understand the network principle, I know that if I leverage the talents of others within that network, I can develop my own. There, there are people in, I was just talking on the phone the other day with a, a civil engineer worker who I, I didn't even, I didn't know until I showed up to a, a networking event. But I understood what I was looking for. I understood why I needed my talent to be developed. So of course, I, I pulled him aside and started picking his brain. Hey, what goes into building, building residential communities? And I think you get the point. The point is, you want to make sure that you understand what are your talents, how can you contribute them, and how can you develop them? And develop the talents of others, because you have things that other people need within that network as well. All right, one more, let's do one more. The third one, the third leverage point is, let's write this down. I'm just gonna write cred, like street cred, credibility. Credibility. And on the other side of that, we wanna think about, actually, let's just start with credibility. Credibility. You want to be able to leverage trust within your network. And how you leverage trust, like how you can add, how this can add to your life and how you add to it is by understanding the credibility of those within your circle. And submitting to that credibility, because here's what will happen. You submit to that credibility and then you can leverage their trust for your life. What does this look like? Well, I showed you, I gave you the book example, right? Where there was a president who referred me to the publisher who, who got me a great deal and was able to get a book out to add value to people all over uh, the world. Because of that person's credibility, they already, they already had trust with the publisher. I didn't. But because of the network principle, because of that principle, they used their trust, let me borrow it, and that allowed me to accelerate the success, which was getting the book finished. I hope this is starting to click with some of you. There's credibility inside of the certain networks. Well, you're working so hard over here to build up your own credibility. Like you, you, you're working and hustling and doing all this, you know, nonsensical <laughs> high energy work for a small return when you could just simply apply the network principle, be a part of a, a network where you're serving, where you're contributing with your talents, and then you can leverage the trust of other people. But the only way you can do that is, is the second aspect. Here's the return. The return piece is when you begin to, first you, you will start off if you come in, especially if you don't have a lot of experience, you start using the credibility of other people and, using, and, and leveraging their trust but after a while, you will build your own trust. You will build up enough trust in your talents and how you serve and your character and your values that you'll begin to leverage your own trust to give back to other people. There's a, um, I told you about that civil engineer I was talking to. I'm sitting, I'm sitting there speaking to this civil engineer and we're having a great conversation. He's giving me value on showing me, teaching me some things I didn't know. And then a friend of mine walks up, who I know is also into building houses. I know the civil engineer is looking for more projects. So I say, hey, you two will be great for each other. Because they both trust me. Now my credibility and trust rises higher because they, they got connected and made a deal right then and there. So this is how that this is how this is the difference between just going to a networking event. And actually understand the net, understanding the network principle so you can accelerate success. What do you think is going to happen the next time I call one of those two gentlemen? They're going to remember back to that. Hey, I trust this guy. 
If he says we need to go here, I'm going to go here. You want to make sure you are the return is that you're building. And here's what I'll say. One of the one of the biggest indicators for building credibility within a network. And I'm not going to get on this soapbox because this is one I can do an entire video on. One of the critical indicators for building credibility is your word. If you are someone that does not do what you say you're going to do, here's my advice to you. Stop saying you're going to do things. If you're someone that says, hey, I'm going to call, I'm going to give you a call at for you at a networking uh, a function and you meet someone and you say, I'm going to give you a call and you never call, stop telling people you're going to do things because you're only hurting your credibility. If you're a leader in an organization and you're telling your team members that you're going to do things and get certain um, tasks or, or goals done and you never follow through, stop telling people these things. You're only hurting your credibility. And your credibility hurts the, the, the um, how can I put this? You're hurting your credibility will only limit this principle in your life. And I see it all the time. People that do a lot of this, man, they, they, they can talk it up, but have very little follow through. And you know some of these people because I'm, I'm sure I can't see you, but I'm sure you're nodding your head. Make sure if you want to build credibility, this is a huge one, this trust factor within the network. And that's why we're going to end here. If you want to accelerate your success by leveraging your network, you better make sure if you say it, it's capital. It's as good as gold. This will help you limit, you know, what you tell people and, and, and what promises you make. It'll help you be more mindful of your planning and what you commit to. It'll help you stop over committing. If you're someone that used to have yes man disease like me, will you say yes to everything? If you make a decision that you're going to honor your word, you'll stop saying yes to everything because you'll really think, can I really follow through on that? And so these three things, we won't get into trove today, maybe another time. But if you leverage just these three things I showed you today, if you, and, and trove is really about, you may have to invest into some of these networks and that's okay. Okay. So I'll give you the QuickBooks version. That's all trove is. It's the money portion. You may have to pay some money. I've, I've paid like 50 grand this year just for certain networks. You don't have to pay that much, but you have to start somewhere. I may, I may have started at 500. I said I wasn't going to talk about Trove, and here I am. Anyways, <laughs> let's wrap this up. So these three things, if you do these three things, of, of, if you understand how to leverage time, talent, and trust, you will activate the network principle in your life, which will, I guarantee you, this will accelerate your success. This will accelerate your success. Think about it, man. There are people, last, there are people, I'm having like a, my brain's going 100 miles an hour. I think about those who are like me and you. You may have an iPhone, I have an Android, but there, there are people like us who actually argue over which one of our phones are better. I do it. I've done it guilty. But have you ever thought about that both our phones, Apple, uh, Samsung, they're in the same network. Like Samsung does the screens for Apple, and I'm sure Apple does things for Samsung. They're, they are actively in front of our faces applying the network principle because they understand that the return is going to be greater if they work together. Meanwhile, we as customers, we're at odds, and they over there making hand over fist. So that's just an example of these three things and what they can look like in the real world. Understand how to leverage these three things. Time, I'm gonna show you one more time. Time, talent, trust. You wanna make sure you're adding to those networks in those three categories and then you're measuring the return. If you do these things, you will be able to measure what the return of your networks are. You'll be able to slim down the ones that don't have a great return and invest more into those that do, all right? I hope this was helpful. If it was, then make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button if you want to get more stuff like this. I'm going to try to keep these videos a little bit shorter, but I want to give you value. So hopefully this is value for those of you who are looking to accelerate success in your life. All right. Till next time, remember this. Success is your destiny. All right. I'll see you on the next one.